In this video, I'll show you my progress in bringing a 3D printed pit droid to life with Arduino. Well, I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. This is not my pit droid. This was sent to me and I was asked if I could put some movement into the head or make him make the head move. So I thought, oh, that'd be great. Sounds like a good project. And uh, they sent the head, the neck, and the torso. There's actually one more piece of the torso that's not here in the video. So I drilled some holes and I used some bearings and some rods and a pipe and some screws and some servos. And here we are today. If you're not familiar with the pit droid, it's from Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Uh, this 3D print came from Droid Division and this is their Etsy store. If you read the reviews, everybody loves this, uh, the prints from this guy. Now most of the pit droids that you're going to find online are poseable. Some people have added LEDs to the eye, the single eye there on the helmet, and that's pretty neat. Now some people have used Arduino, but it's been for sound effects and voice. I couldn't find any really good detailed videos using Arduino head movement, but hopefully in the near future I'll have a more detailed video that I can share. Now when I first started out I used a spring to uh, connect to the servo and the stationary pole there that comes through the head and that's for the up and down motion and I used a, a bent copper wire uh, and copper is not good because it's a soft metal and it's just really not good for moving left and right there's a lot of play uh, in that and it, you, there's a lot of shaking as you can see that thing shakes like crazy with that spring in it um, now I found the secret to having everything work real nice and smooth is to have everything nice and tight. You don't want flimsy wires and springs in this setup, or it, maybe there's something I'm missing out on here. I don't know. So here's a look at the droid with the top of the head on, and that helps out with the bounce a little bit. There's less bounce. I've used maybe 10 different springs with different tensions and lengths and I wasn't really happy with any of them but you'll see here in just a second that I switched to a wire and that helped a lot with the bouncing and it's uh, really a better look for moving the head up and down. So I switched out the copper wire for a, get this, a paper clip which is very sturdy but if you keep bending it, it, it breaks pretty easy so that wasn't a good fix and over time you can see here that it moves so fast that it'll kind of stretch it out and then they'll start doing that shaking bit again but uh, I switched out the spring for a copper wire and it works pretty well so this code is obviously a little too fast and it gets real fast like it can tip over if uh, if you're not careful because it does move at different speeds sometimes he moves his head slow sometimes it'll move real quick just like that right there so let's slow the code down a little bit it'll be a little choppier but still it'll look pretty good so after many modifications to the code, here's what I settled on. I actually think it looks pretty good, pretty happy with this. Um, the movements aren't as jerky and uh, they don't swing and sway a whole lot and they don't seem to want to tip the thing over, so that's good. Now I think this would look really neat with the eye if you put an LED in there, also if you put a motion sensor on it, and also if you added some sound effects with some MP3 tracks or something, I think that'd be really neat. Let's pop the top off here and take a look inside. There are two pivot points on either side of the neck up at the top and that's what these tabs are from. They are supporting the bottom of the head. Now I did have to grind out a little bit of the print uh, for one side of this but you can put a little bit of Bondo on there, cover that up, put some super glue on there and make this even more stable than what it is. Now I didn't set anything permanent because I still have to take it apart and ship it back and I didn't want to do that and put it in the mail and uh, have it end up getting broken. But one thing I'll do for sure is tighten up these two pivot points. You can see the rod there on the right. Here's a look at it without the eye and without the top of the hat and the head on. And it moves pretty well. The final thing you'd want to do is put this Arduino in the head and close that up. You can run power from the Arduino and the servo motors from the same power source and that would be Five or six volt would be fine at uh, between one and two amp. Now you can go seven volt, but that's about as high as you want to go for these servos. I probably also would want to clip the wires of the servo motors and just keep the signal wires up in the head with the Arduino and then run the Arduino power and then the power uh, wires for the servos down the back here. I'll conceal them. And there's a battery compartment right here. If you can find a battery to fit in there, there's a little cover that you can put over that and conceal that as well. So 
I think that would be a really nice setup. No, I'm definitely not a pro at this. I kind of learn as I go. This is my first time really working with a 3D model of any type like this. So if you have any comments, questions, or hopefully even suggestions, I'm definitely interested in seeing what they are. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with somebody else who may find some use for this video. Thank you, and I'll see you again very soon.